I found this old uh, craft crate, and I don't know why, but I just really liked the way that it looked, especially like the old looking logo and the lettering. And uh, so in this video, I'm going to make my own company crate in kind of the same design and dimensions. And obviously, I don't own any company, so I just made one up in the same design and font as that old craft box. And I'm just going to use these to hold random stuff around my shop. So to make these boxes, I'm going to start with a 8 foot 2 by 6 just because I always have a lot of those on hand. And I figured I could make about 10 of those vintage crates with this. And to start, I'm going to cut it into 8, 11, and 7 8 inch sections. And that kind of sounds like a weird dimension for this, but that's just the length of the craft box. It just had really weird dimensions. But it works out really well for this because after you take out the curve of the blade, there's almost no waste. And then once I had all eight of those cut, I'm going to bring that over to the table saw and I'm going to cut it almost directly in a half, two and eleven sixteenths. And again, that's coming from the craft box. That's the height of the craft box and it works out really well for this. Again, almost no waste. So I cut five of those in half and those are going to make the sides. And then I'm going to bring up my blade so that I can resaw each of those pieces into two quarter inch boards and one half inch board. And then last step to make these sides, I'm just going to cross cut these half inch wide boards into four and three quarter inch long pieces. I have all the sides of the boxes cut now. And next I need to paint on the logo and the lettering. And a lot of people may not like this, but I am going to use a 3D printer that I bought a few months ago to make some stamps for this. And uh, I've been trying to learn how to 3D print for a while now, and I'm just not very good with computer stuff. But I've managed to 3D print some stuff ever since I got that 3D printer a few months ago. And uh, you may have seen I made a, a paint can lid that holds my brush. I've been using that in some of my other videos. And uh, I've been just trying to use it more often so I can get good at it. And this is some really good practice. Next, I'm going to take these printed out uh, stamps and I'm going to glue them to a jig that I made that fits on my vise. And this jig is going to let me use my vise as almost like a printing press. This ended up working really well towards the end, but there was a huge learning curve in using this jig. Um, one of the biggest problems is getting the paint right, you know, because it's if it's too thin, the paint is too thin, then it's just going to all run, and then it's the stamp is not going to come out right. And then if it's too thick, then uh, the stamps stick to the wood too much, and then when you finally do peel the stamps off, um, the paint is all blotchy and it doesn't look right. And then also uh, getting the right amount of pressure with that vise. Um, so there was a lot to figure out and you can see that later on when I show you all the stamps once they're done You can really tell which ones were the first stamps and which ones were the last ones where I really figured it out
I have all the long side stamped, and so now I'm going to switch out that jig for the short side jig, and I'm going to stamp all the short sides. Coming up here, you're going to see all the sides done and stamped, and this is really cool because you can see right here, this is the last stamps that I did, and those ones turned out really clear, and then at the bottom, those are the first stamps I did, and you can really just see the progression there. But before I can put all the stamp sides together, I need to make the bottoms of each box, and I still have three of those 11 and 7 8 inch sections, so I'm going to take off about a quarter inch from the side of each of those pieces, so I'm down to about five and a quarter, and then I'm going to resaw each of these into four quarter inch boards and uh, that'll leave me with 12 of these. I only need 10 but that way I can choose the best ones. And just like the old box, I'm going to put these together using nails and uh, staples. But uh, before that, I'm going to make these nails and staples look old. And I saw a trick where you mix uh, vinegar, salt, and hydrogen peroxide. And you can spray that on metal to make instant rust. So I'm setting up all my nails, and I'm also going to do this with my staples. And I'm going to spray that on. And then uh, I'm just going to heat it up with a blowtorch. Uh, it didn't show that in the video that I saw. But uh, it just said to let them dry. Well, this is making them dry a lot faster, and it worked pretty well for me. So, And uh, now I can finally put the boxes together. Last touch to make these look a little bit older, I bought some stain. It's not really meant to make it look vintage. I think it's red oak stain, um, but uh, it really matches the same color as that uh, craft box that I'm trying to copy here. So it worked out pretty well. I really love the way that these turned out. Um, some of the stamps did not turn out great. Like I said, the first ones were not great, and I could have just re-stamped them, but uh, I ended up just keeping them because these are just going to be in my shop, and I guess it goes with the vintage look anyways. But uh, I still have those stamps, so I can always make more of these. And now that I know how to use them a lot better, uh, I know that the next ones that I make, I can make really clear stamps. So cool new skill and really fun project.